Hi and welcome to another narration presented by yours truly, Cryptids Roast. The intro has been shortened, but you will find more information in the outro. Let's just take a moment silence for all the haters. That's enough. Be sure to check out the blooper reel at the end of the video, which is then followed by the end screen where you will find more videos listed. So grab your coffee, sit back and enjoy the show. And don't forget, where fear is, happiness is not. My grandfather fought in the Emu Wars and he watched dozens of soldiers get massacred by those psychotic birds. This awesome story is written by Reddit author Sugar Sode. My grandfather was one of the sweetest men that ever lived. He would always have a big smile on his face and everyone loved him. I have only seen him angry one time in my life and it actually scared me to see him like that. I had discovered a story about something called the Emu Wars when soldiers were used to hunt down emus and I was laughing about how ridiculous it sounded. My grandfather started screaming at me and telling me not to talk about something that I knew nothing about. He stormed out of the house while I stood there shaking in fear. A couple of days later he returned to our house to apologise for screaming at me. He could see the confusion on my face and I could tell how terrible he felt. I apologised for making fun of the emu wars as I just thought it was funny. He told me to sit down as he wanted to share his experiences with me. I sat down and waited as he began to tell his tale. I had joined the military when I was 18 as I had been living with an abusive father and this seemed like the perfect way to escape. I completed the basic training and was assigned to base. There was very little to do on a daily basis so we were constantly just training and having fun. Our base commander was an older soldier who didn't care about what happened as long as no one did anything stupid. One morning we were all called out for an assembly and we were all quite excited as we hoped we might get some action. You could see the evident disappointment on everyone's faces as we were told that we were being mobilised to deal with a herd of emus. They were causing trouble for farmers and we were being sent to cull them. We were told to be ready at 12 the next morning. Everyone was giddy the next morning as it seemed like a fun excursion. There were about 325 of us loaded into trucks as we headed out. It was a long tedious journey and the mood quickly darkened as the heat slowly wore down everyone's mood. There was very little to look at in any direction with only the occasional house. We finally stopped after almost an 8 hour journey and I could see the relief on the other guys' faces as we jumped off the trucks. My legs were aching from not moving for so long and I had to stretch for a minute to get some feeling in them. We were in a remote location with nothing to see in any direction. Our base commander approached us and explained that a herd of emus were seen about 10 miles from here and we would need to walk to get there as the terrain was very bad. He left about 50 of us back with the trucks while the rest of us marched along. We finally reached the summit of a steep hill and gazed down to see about 250 emus on the far side. The commander ordered us to set up our weapons. We all set up and awaited the order to fire. I was a very good shooter and lined up my rifle on one of the closest birds. The sound was deafening as we all opened fire. I watched as my bullet destroyed half the face of the bird I had been aiming at. Their gaze all turned on us and seemed to be challenging us. The bird I had shot seemed to be glaring at me with its one good eye. A few of the other soldiers took a few steps backwards as the stares from the birds made them feel uncomfortable. The commander ordered us to fire again and stop being such cowards. 
I once again targeted the same bird and watched in amazement as it somehow dodged the bullet at the last possible moment. Somehow, with all of the bullets we fired, only 10 or so of the animals lay on the ground, dead. I could see the hatred in their eyes as they gazed up at us. The commander was giving the order to fire another round when the animals suddenly took off running in the opposite direction. We stood there for a few moments watching them disappear off into the horizon. We were finally ordered to pack up our stuff as it was starting to get dark. We marched back in a disorderly fashion and were constantly on our guard as we could hear running feet on all sides. The emus kept appearing in small groups for a few moments before running away after we opened fire. I could hear the fear in the commander's voice as he ordered us to stop firing as we were just wasting bullets. We kept stopping for breaks as the rest of the company were scared and needed to go to the toilet all the time. It was almost pitch black when we arrived back to the trucks and we were met by scenes of carnage. The bodies of the soldiers that were left behind were strewn about the site, with their insides ripped out. The trucks had been savagely attacked as there was evident scrapes and dents on all of them. Whatever had attacked them had taken them completely by surprise, as many of them didn't have their guns in their hands. We were all standing there frozen in terror when one of the emus walked out the shadows and began plucking an eye out from one of the bodies. I raised my gun to shoot it, but it ran off before I got a shot off. We stood there not speaking for a few moments until the commander ordered us to set up a defensive ring and drag the bodies out of the way. Everyone began rushing around in the pandemonium as we were just so freaked out. It took us almost an hour to move the bodies and then set up a defence around the trucks. I don't think any of us got much sleep that night as we were all on edge. I was awoken the next morning by panicked voices. I pushed myself off the rough ground and walked over to see what was going on. I listened to the conversation to discover that all of the bodies were missing as something had dragged them all off when we weren't paying attention. The commander told us to stop panicking and jump into the trucks so we could get the fuck out of here. We rushed to gather up our supplies and jumped into the back of the trucks. There was a sense of relief on people's faces as we knew we were finally getting away from this godforsaken place. The relief was short lived though, as none of the trucks would start. The damage that had been inflicted on them had rendered them useless. We stood around deciding what to do when a scream made us all spin around. My mouth hung agape as I gazed at the thousands of emus that had somehow snuck up on us and now surrounded us on all sides. We all began to back up against each other in a vain attempt to get away from them. I recognised the bird I had shot earlier as it stood front and centre among the others. His face had been crippled by my bullet and his eye seemed to be glowing. It turned around and all of the other birds followed its lead. None of us had even thought to raise our guns as we were just so terrified. It took a few minutes for everyone to relax as we were all still huddled together. The commander grabbed a map and discovered the nearest town was about six days walk from here. Most of our food supplies had been destroyed, so we were ordered to grab anything that was salvageable and prepare to march. It took a lot longer to get ready than usual as people were fighting over food and water. It almost resulted in fist fights, but the commander managed to calm everyone down by pointing out we had bigger concerns. We eventually started marching in a very complex fashion as we were all trying to use others as cover in case of another attack. We were constantly being hounded by the emus as they would suddenly appear in the distance before quickly disappearing from sight. We were all constantly on edge as we had never seen anything like it. We had probably been marching for three hours when the attack began. 
They just came out of nowhere, and there were hundreds of them. I washed as one of them knocked the person beside me to the ground, and then used his claws to rip his throat out. The attack was so sudden that many of us hadn't even had a chance to reach for our guns. I had managed to grab my gun and killed the closest emu to me. I was about to fire on another bird, but then they all suddenly fled. We lost another 40 soldiers in this attack. My kill had been the only confirmed emu kill. There were a few injuries, but nothing severe, so we continued to march after grabbing supplies from the corpses. Everyone walked along with their weapons ready in case of another attack. It slowly began to dawn on us that we might not make it out of this alive. We set up a camp that night with 25 guards on rotating shifts. I had the first shift and I could hear noises in the distance as they seemed to be circling us. I lay down on the ground after my shift and fell asleep instantly due to exhaustion. I was awoken by screams all around us and the sound of rushing feet. I grabbed my gun to discover the emus were launching hit and run attacks on us. I heard a noise behind me and spun around and fired my gun. I watched in horror as I looked at the commander's face and noticed the blood pouring out of the gunshot wound in his throat. He collapsed to the ground while the screams of agony and fear surrounded me. The next morning we discovered we had lost another 57 men. Five of them had died from friendly fire and I was thankful that no one realised I was responsible for the commander's death. We began to march, but it was obvious that many of us seemed like they had already given up. The next few days were chaotic as we were being attacked every few minutes. There were less than 15 of us left alive at this point as the damn birds killed anyone they could get close to. We had passed numerous houses as we marched, but we discovered that all of the inhabitants had been slaughtered by the birds. The bird I had shot at at the start was always watching me from the distance and I felt like he was mocking me. We were barely able to stand and I suggested we take cover inside the next house as we can grab cover inside. It took us an hour to reach the next house which was a two story. We quickly used what we could find in the house to try and make the house more secure. We pushed furniture in front of windows and used wood to barricade the doors shut. We were running desperately low on ammo as most of our supplies had been lost in our march. We grabbed knives and whatever else we could find to use as alternative weapons. We all looked at each other with a look of defeat as we all knew this was going to be our last stand. We set ourselves up in different positions around the house in the hopes of holding out for as long as possible. We knew we didn't stand a chance against these demonic creatures as they seemed hell bent on wiping us out. The hammering at the outside of the building started just after it got dark. It was coming from all sides as the emus tried to force a way in. I heard the sounds of sporadic gunfire from upstairs as they fired down on top of them. It took less than an hour for them to get inside. We tried to use a choke point to funnel them so that we could kill them. Unfortunately, this only worked for a minute or two as they breached the house from multiple locations. I was forced to retreat up the stairs and watched as they slaughtered everyone on the bottom floor. I locked myself in a bedroom and I knew that I would probably die in here. I had lost my gun while fleeing and now my only weapon was a kitchen knife. The creatures had made their way upstairs and I could hear screams quickly being cut off in the other rooms. Everything was now deathly silent as I awaited my fate. I was near exhaustion and must have dozed off. I awoke the next morning to silence and wondered what had happened. I opened the door to find the house soaked with blood but devoid of bodies. I made my way downstairs and walked out the front door. I froze in my steps and felt my bladder release as I gazed out the door. 
Thousands of emus stood outside and they all gazed at me. The emu I had shot stood at the very front and he seemed to be smiling with what was left of his face. They suddenly all moved and a small gap opened up in between their ranks. I cautiously moved forward as I feared they intended to just surround and kill me. After I made it through, they suddenly ran off into the other direction. It took me another two days to finally reach someone living. It took me another week to get back to my base. No one would believe me at first and a number of high ranking officers arrived as they wanted to know how many soldiers could just disappear. They organised another mission with over a thousand heavily armed soldiers. They brought spare trucks to hopefully rescue any other survivors. I kept getting weird looks from the other soldiers as they thought I was somehow responsible for this. They stopped looking at me like this as we started passing the blood soaked locations where we had been attacked. We eventually reached the trucks that we had originally used and were shocked to discover the mutilated bodies of the soldiers that had accompanied me. The officers looked bewildered as they didn't know how to react to this sight. They all stood there with their mouths hanging agape as the hordes of emus suddenly surrounded us. They were soaked in blood and seemed to be challenging us. The officers quickly began issuing orders and the soldiers began to gather up the remains and load them into the trucks. We left the site as quickly as we possibly could while the emus watched from a distance. The military made up a ton of bullshit to cover up what happened and paid off the soldiers families. I was then forced out of the army and threatened with prison if I ever said anything to anyone. I gazed at my grandfather in shock as he sat there weeping. He made me swear that I wouldn't say a word of this while he was still alive. I kept my promise as he passed away a few years ago and I finally decided to share his tale. Be careful of emus as there is something not quite right with them. And I hope you all enjoy the following blooper reel. They were causing trouble for farmers and we They were causing trouble for farmers and we were being sent to cull them. A few of the other soldiers took a few A few of the other soldiers took a few steps backwards as the stares from the birds made them feel uncomfortable. I listened to the conversation to I listened to the conversation to discover that all of the bodies were missing as something had dragged them all off when we weren't paying attention. The damage had been inf the damage that had been inflicted on them had rendered them useless. We lost another 40 soldiers in that We lost another 40 soldiers in this attack. They stopped looking at me like they stopped looking at me like this as we started passing the blood soaked locations where we had been attacked. They all stood there with their mouths hanging agape as the hordes of emus quickly They all stood there with their mouths hanging agape as the hordes of emus suddenly surrounded us. We left the site as quickly as possible as we left the site as quickly as we possibly could while the emus watched from a distance. You can send your donations. You can send your coffee donations, big or small, to that site. Hey family, please be so kind as to throw punch the like button and smack the ass of the subscription button as well. And remember to choke hold that notification bell and then select all. That way you'll receive all notifications each time I upload a new video. And by subscribing, you'll be the first to see all of our new spooky creepypasta stories. A very big thank you to Sugar Sode for allowing me to narrate this awesome story. Make sure to check out Sugar Sode's Reddit for more brilliant stories. 
Also, be sure to check out the Sugar Sewed playlist here for more of their stories that I have already narrated. I would just like to say a very big thank you to all of the authors that I have worked with and all the ones that I will work with in the future. So thank you all, my brothers and sisters. And why not hashtag CryptidsRoost in your comments. If you would like to support the channel, I have now created an account at buymeacoffee.com. You can send your coffee donations, big or small, to that site. Link is below. Or via paypal.me slash cryptidsroost. And don't forget to check out the end screen, see above. That will also list some more videos in my back catalogue. Take care everyone, and I hope you all have a wonderful and peaceful night. And don't forget, where fear is, happiness is not.